Christ alone, Malaika. Malaika alone, sir. In the name of Allah, who came to us in the person of a man. Right. And you know, we in the nation of Islam, we have a problem with the rest of the world. The rest of the world, the Christians are waiting on Jesus' return. Yes, sir. And he's supposed to be the son of man. Well, the son of man is human. Right. Yes, he's sir. A man. The Muslim world is waiting on the, 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 the 13th of man or the 12th of man. Anyway, they're waiting on the Mahdi. Right, right, right. And they're waiting on the man. We in the nation of Islam are not waiting on the man. No, sir. We said the man came in 1930. That's right. right. That's right. We're not waiting no more. That's he right. came to the person, Master Farad Muhammad. Right. So we're just looking for instructions from him to go ahead and build God's kingdom on earth. We're not waiting for nobody else to come. And for that, we are maligned by the Christians, the Jews. Oh, yeah, the Jews too. They're waiting on the Messiah. That's right. They said right. Jesus wasn't the Messiah. That's right. So they're waiting on the Messiah. But again, they're waiting on the man. So we say, yeah, he came in 1930. And they say, no, he didn't. Okay, well, fine. You don't believe he did, fine. But don't be talking mess about us just because we believe it. Right. We just believe it. You don't believe it. No problem. Right. We we'll wait and see. Right. But stop messing with us. That's right. Running behind Farrakhan, everything he do, try to do, you come and try to shut it down. Right. Just leave us alone. Yes, sir. Shut him off Facebook. Just leave him alone. What, you scared? He, he can't talk to your people? Why you scared? Right. Well, right. You know who he is. That's why he's scared. That's right. That's right. That's right. In the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the black man from Deep Step, Georgia, right outside of Sandersville, Georgia, who when he saw this man speak, saw Master Rob Muhammad speak in 1931, right. he knew what he was looking at. Right. He was the only one who knew what he was looking at. Right. The right. others right. just saw him as a messenger. Right. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, no, you God. You're the one that the world's been waiting on. Right, that's right. He stepped up to him after the presentation and told him that. And then Master Farad Muhammad was said, well, who knows that besides you, Elijah? Right. And then he took Elijah underneath his wing right. and taught him for three and one half years right. to take his place amongst the people and become a god too. Even though Elijah Muhammad didn't know that he was being made into a god, he was just so in love with Master Farad Muhammad that he wanted to give his life to him to save the people. And then uh, Master Farad Muhammad told the messenger, well, you know, these people are so are so, are so, are so terrible, so hard-headed, stiff-necked, and rebellious, I think I'm going to kill them all. He said, well, kill me too. Right. Right, that's right. Come on. See, that's why I say the greatest love story ever told. Right, that's right. Because of the love for us and the love for them for us. And so the Honorable Elijah Muhammad stepped up to him and said, you are God and you are God in person. And as we say in the streets, it takes one to know one. And the most honorable, I can't say most, he said don't say most. I just said the honorable Minister Louis Farley. I don't want to get in trouble because he might see him. That's right. Um, you know, it's hard not to say that. Yes, sir. Because he is most spectacular, most magnificent. So I won't say most honorable. But the honorable <laughs> Minister Louis Farrakhan, who you can't evaluate him as an orator. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Now see, when the nation fell after the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed in 1975, we're going to get into this as we get into the lecture. It fell. When I say fell, I mean the farms or so that I, that I work on. Yeah. Yes, sir. I was to work on that farm when I got out of college. I finished A&T. But when I got out, they stole all the equipment, rent all the land out, and later they sold the whole thing. So that was nothing for me to do down there no more. They sold the farm. They sold all the businesses. Moss Mary Ann, the, the palace. Right. Everything was taken down. All the businesses completely destroyed. Not by the white men. Mm. Mm. But by former members of the nation of Islam who were taken underneath the wing of Wallace, uh, Muhammad, Wallace D. Muhammad, who we could not defend the teachings against his mind. Because right. he was sent over to the East to study Islam, and he came back, and he said, there's nothing in the books, in the libraries, about uh, Yaqub. So 
We were stunned. I'm going to show you some things you know, later on. Yes. Straighten that out. But we were so stunned we couldn't defend it. And then I tried to stick with him for a while until he said, well, you know, uh, we're not going to build a nation, a black nation. Right. But when we die, we can all go to heaven. To hear out. <laughs> I said, what? Uh, I joined the Nation of Islam and I didn't get not go to I thought I joined the nation. I did not go to one party. Okay. I went to Columbia University first. I joined the Nation of Islam in New York and came down here. Now, in case y'all don't know, A and T used to be the, the party school. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. There. All the faggots walking around. There. I don't know what's going on over there now. Okay. But it used to be nothing but a party school, right? It still is. It still is. Yeah. But it's men party with men. Anyhow, wow. anyhow, I did not go to one party. I did not go to one football game. Not one basketball game. All I did was push the program of all the be like mom. That's all I did. And that is man, because I want to build a nation. That's why I joined the nation this long. The nation of Islam. Okay? Now he's going to talk about, I'm, I'm, I, I, now I got to wait to have heaven after I die and let this cracker keep this? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. so, you know, I left that. You know, so I didn't leave the nation. I left that. They destroyed the nation. And then I left that. And I didn't come back into the nation until 1993. Uh, and it took me so long because I was so upset. I found out in 84 that it was being set up again. But I said, you know, you know, I've been there, done that. And um, I was at Michigan State getting my PhD. And so I, I wasn't about, I wouldn't listen to Farrakhan. I would read the paper. I would read the books. But I would not listen to his voice. I'm going to show you all something in a minute why I would listen to his voice. But I would listen to his voice. Because, see, I knew something was funny about that voice. I knew something was funny about that voice. And I did not want to hear that voice because I didn't want to be captured emotionally, captured by that voice. So it took me a long time for me to come back because I was upset because he didn't fight to keep the nation going because when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left, everybody on planet Earth, everybody, everybody on planet Earth <laughs> knew Farrakhan was the man. Right. Nobody knew who Wallace was. So, you know, we so, said, but now, you know, it took us a while to me while to understand that there would have been a bloodbath. I didn't know that. I didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. There would have been a bloodbath if Mr. Farrakhan had challenged to take the position. Right. So he just stepped back. And there's, there's something scriptural come on, come on. Yeah. about that. Y'all yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. remember Solomon? Yes, sir. And them two women coming fighting over the baby? Right. And both of them claiming that the baby was theirs? Right. And Solomon said, okay, what we do is uh, somebody go uh, bring me a sword. Right. We're going to split the baby in half. So you have half the baby and you all have half the baby. Mm -hmm. And so the real mama said, no, 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 no. She can have the baby. So okay, but then, then, uh, that's your baby then. So you take the baby and you woman, you get the hell out of here. I mean, I don't know, how, I don't know what he said. <laughs> right. Just put it back on the street. You know what I mean? But yes, he gave the baby to the to, to the to the real mother because the real mother couldn't couldn't stand to see the baby dead. Even though she would lose the baby, she'd rather lose the baby to this other woman than the baby to be dead. Right, right, right. right. So that's the way Mr. Farrakhan was about us. He didn't want a fight. Because he then we would bleed. And he didn't want that. So he just stepped back and he tried to help Wallace <coughs> until Wallace just started talking bad about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I tell you this straight up. On my Facebook page, there are some rules. You can talk best about me, Richard. Okay? It's okay. You can disagree with what I say. It's okay. But when you disrespect the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan, Right. Blocked. Out. You know, Out. excommunication. Right. Cyberspace blocked. You out of here. <laughs> I don't play that. Right. So when uh, 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 they disrespected the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Mr. Farrakhan could no longer take it anymore. So he left. Right. And then he started the Nation of Islam all over again. Right. Right. 
just based on the teachings. Because he wasn't in the bloodline, and that's another thing we're going to talk about today. He wasn't in the bloodline, okay? But he was in the spiritual line. Right, that's right. And he didn't know he was in the spiritual line. Hmm. Except his spirit was the love of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he would not allow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to be written out of history. Right. That's so he right. stood back up because of his love for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, mm -hmm. and now we realize that he was the spiritual son right. of the right. Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, yes. And now he's finding out that he was the spiritual son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and of Master Farah Muhammad. Oh, yeah. So in this new world, it's not going to be no power and positions passed down because of your bloodline. Right, that's right. Make it plain. You have to prove it based upon your works right. and your spirit. Right. You may have PhDs and uh, uh, MDs and whatever Ds and whatever, and maybe some A's in the middle. Okay. But if you don't have the right spirit, that's right. For the people and for Allah, for God, for the law, for what Master Farah Muhammad wants to put on on the earth, then you can't run this. Right. You can maybe work underneath that brother, maybe you can grow up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But you can't run this because you got to have the right spirit. Not just about, it ain't about your bloodline. And your work ethic has got to be there. You got to be qualified. But you also, your spirit got to be right. That's right, right. that's right. Make it for and, and you can check spirit in case you don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, Dr. Rizzi is a mean dude, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Babies love me. Uh. Now see, as long as baby love me, I ain't worried about y'all. Because the baby can pick you up. That's right. Quick. Right. Baby start, what's, what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, with that, I think I'm trying to do the opening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to greet you in the greetings of peace and peace and peace and peace and peace Now, Brother Minister Willie, you know, he just be rolling on that spirit thing. I have this laptop with PowerPoint. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. To control me. Right. Yes, sir. Because I, you know, I, I, I have to be controlled because I just keep going, going, going. All right? But I wanted to start off something a little different than I had planned to because I want to talk about a, 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 a scripture. And we're going to talk about later on about this whole game with the Bible. But there's, a, there's one verse, and then I'm going to go back and read the verses up, up to that verse. This is in Revelations 19 and 12. It says, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Now, when I read that years ago, I said, now that's, that's, that's strange. A name written, had a name written that no man knew. See, all that masons and shriners and all that, that was, they hit Pine and Biff upside the head because he wouldn't give the name of God. Right, that's right. And we think that was maybe Jehovah, Allah. No, no, no. He was talking about the name of the person to come to take their behinds out. Mm -hmm. Right, that's Lucifer. right. Name of that God. There you go. You got it right. It's Lucifer. No, no, no. Not no, no. The name that they were worried about wasn't Lucifer. No. The name they were worried about was Farrakhan. That's right. right. Farrakhan is a name that nobody knew. Right. And Mr. Farrakhan, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, promised Mr. Farrakhan that he would tell him the meaning of that, but he never told him the meaning of that. Right. And then That's Mr. Right. Farrakhan said he had to learn the meaning of that. Yeah. But in actuality, see, Mr. Farrakhan, he is so humble. That's right. That's right. He says stuff, but then, you know, he don't say it very loud. He, no, no. He, had, he had to make the meaning of that name. In other words, if you want to study, it's a new attribute of Allah, right. Farrakhan. Right. And you have to study him to understand that attribute. Right, that's right. It's one that's evolving and producing and growing. That's right. Not something that anybody could have told him, because every 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 attribute has a meaning. Right, right. that's but right. But he had yet to express himself and fulfill himself as himself because himself was it. Right. And now 
Farrakhan now is a name that he said that Uncle Elijah Muhammad said that only your immediate family can carry that name. Right. Right. Because that was that was and that is a special name. Now, so I don't understand how the Jews slept Farrakhan when Abu Elijah Muhammad left. Here's a man that when he speaks, everybody listens, and he had a name that nobody knew, not even himself. Well, there it is right there in the scripture. I don't see how they slept. Now look, let's read some more about what they say about this man. This this matter of fact, he's, he, he's called later on here the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But let's go up here and get started on it. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, starting off in Revelation 11. He, he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Now let's go back. That's a faithful and true. Those of you who have been keeping up with the Honorable Bishop Lewis for our time, has anybody been more faithful to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and true to what he taught than Mr. Farrakhan? Come on. Yes, sir. Mr. Farrakhan has said, praise be to God. He said he gave his son, Mustafa, the right to kill him if he deviated. That's right. Come on, man. That's right. There's some things you need to know. That's right. Now, y'all see Mustafa, right? Come on, man. Come on. I don't think not many people roll up on Mustafa. Right? No, sir. Right. <laughs> and the minister gave Mustafa, when he was to rebuild the nation, he gave Mustafa the right that if he deviated to kill him. Yes, sir. So, you talk about being, he was faithful and true. That's now, right. he said, if, if I'm a liar, prove it. Go ahead. Come on. They've never been able to prove Mr. Farrakhan as a liar. That's right. And now he's asking for a showdown for those who called him liar to come and prove he lied. Really? Okay? They really scared. I don't blame them, that's right. but they run the scared. So then, that's when it goes to the, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. You know, the last Savior that you saw some of those crowns, right? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Go ahead. Now, who else can carry that name other than Farrakhan? Because you know when you hear him, you hear the word of God. That's and that's right. what Abu Elijah Muhammad said about him. Right, that's right. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And here's the part that I love. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, mm. that him. with it he should smite the nations. That's him. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But when I want to go back up to when they talk about his sharp sword that goeth out of his mouth. That's him. That's him. His tongue, <clears throat> Moses, Musa had a rod. Right. right. Farrakhan got that tongue. Yeah. That's right. And that's why I said, I won't go listen to him. Okay, when the nation <laughs> fell, when they say it's coming back, I won't go listen to him. Because I knew he would catch him, capture me with that tongue, uh -huh. that voice. But he did something. And I'm going to get into it a little bit later on. He did something on time. Right. Based on my talent. See, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad knew that Master Farah Muhammad was God in person based on his talent. Right. Right. He had studied the scripture and the history, and he knew what he was looking for. And when he showed up, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talented and said, that's the man, that's him. Right. Then Master Farah Muhammad said, well, who knows that besides you, Elijah? So I'm going to give y'all a little bit of what talented me up to come back to follow the nation of Islam, in particular, mm -hmm. the Safarikon. Yes, sir. So, and so when I made this tally, you know, he, he, he ain't CIA, he ain't Lusard, he ain't FBI, ain't nobody put him up to this because nobody knew what I was doing because of my personal talent. Right. I didn't tell nobody what I was doing. Okay, it was something I was studying, and when he did what he did on time for me, Come on. I just yeah. saluted, fell back in the ranks, and said, yes, sir, what can I do to, to help, sir? Yeah. Praise be to the Lord. You know, this thing is crazy. 
<laughs> okay? You know, you know, Christians, they be talking about love of Jesus and love of the Lord and what they've done for them in their life and all this type of stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. yes. Most of them just jaw with the white man they praise again. You know, they ain't really got no direct uh, communication or help from God that they can just say, oh, that God did that. But I've had that experience. So I've been led, not knowing that I was being led, to this point. And I was sent down there to the farm for a reason. That's right. And I just discovered recently what that reason was. Right. The enemy has planned to eliminate five billion people on the planet. Right. Are you serious? I am serious. And I found out how he's doing it, how he plans to do it, and I'm like that that little boy up there and, and, and put a, his finger in the plug of the dike that was going to flood right. the whole country. But I'm, I'm just, I got my finger in this dike here. I'm trying to say, hey, look, man, you need to y'all need to run. Y'all heard about Monsanto being sued? You got all the news now, right? Yes, sir. I did a poem in 1999 called Terminator Genes where I talked about you, there's a war going on that you might want to know. You better find out from Monsanto. This is 1999. Uh -huh. So now Monsanto is going down. Now, there's a game plan behind that. Right. The first person that sued they first said two hundred fifty-eight million dollars. Later on, they said he accepted seventy-eight million dollars, and he was a black man sued for cancer. I mean, showing articles showing that these GMOs were called cancer for years. They've been denying that it would. Now they accepted it, and they gave this brother seventy-eight million. They saw over two hundred fifty-eight million, and they put a picture of him up. I said, "Look, that, that is the face of." Death. Meaning that they sink in Monsanto, and when Monsanto and Roundup sinks, and the farmers stop using it, and the agriculture goes down, they're going to blame that black man mm. for starting it. Starting the demise of Monsanto. Now, Bayer bought Monsanto knowing that Monsanto was going to be sued. Why? Bayer is from Germany. In Europe, uh, 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 Roundup Ready, Roundup was already outlawed. Mm -hmm. So why would you buy a company that you know countries are outlawing it unless you, you know, you ain't that stupid. Right. That's but right. <clears throat> when Monsanto goes down and the farmers stop, then they they're coming back with a whole new line of GMO and chemicals. Mm -hmm. They got an experiment station down there in Georgia, in Dawson, Georgia, mm -hmm. working on cotton to make sure that this new set of, of herbicides, insecticides, etc., work. Okay. Okay. That they, that, that they work. And they don't come forth as the Savior. And nobody's going to question what's in their GMO. Right. Because they're scared. Because, you know, you better not, you know, they're going to act like they believe that it's, it's going to be safe. But they're really scared because they say, you know, if we don't, do, if we don't buy this stuff, if we don't go along with it, then they're going to sink that. And, they gonna, and, and we're going to all starve to death. So they're going to accept what Bayer is pulling off. So they're setting up something. But see, Allah, who came to person match for Rob Muhammad, I'm going to show you something he did last year. Now, this year, something's going on in the Midwest. Right. Mm -hmm. It's flooding. Right, that's right. It's flooding so severe that only, in some states, only 40% of the corn crop was right. planted this year. That's right, that's right. And in the Mississippi Delta, they said not only could they not plant this year, they won't plant next year. Mm. Now, so Allah is, is curtailing America on the sides and in the heartland. That's right. right. And so now there is going to be food shortages. There is going to be price spikes. That's why we got the Stable Goods Project. We're doing another one in a couple of months. You better get stocked up. 
So this bad boy, this Titanic is going down. But now, when it goes down, it's going to be blamed on the weather. And not Monsanto going down. So that means that, that for it, Bayer's plan of, 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 of saying that the famine was caused by that black man who took Monsanto down. Now, everybody's looking at the weather. Now, who controls the weather? Mr. Farrakhan said, watch the weather. Right. And he said last week, he said, when I finish talking, it's going to get worse. Yes, sir. Right? right? Yes, sir. So now, when the famine comes, people go say, Farrakhan warned us about that. No. See, that's what you got to do with, with, with Negroes. <clears throat> you know what I mean? I never understood Negroes until I got a dog. Okay. They so in love with the white man, ain't nothing a white man can do. Nothing. 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 <laughs> that he can do. I try to get rid of that dog. See that dog, I picked him up with a little baby. You know. But he was upset because he couldn't come in the house. You know, Muslims, we can have dogs. Right. But they can't come in the house. Yeah. And so he didn't appreciate that. You know how Negroes won't come in the house of master? We had integration will be a master's house. We had segregation. We had our own house, our own businesses. But now we're going to be a master's house. We're going to be a master's house. Okay? Just like a, a tail wagon dog. Right, that's right. So he was so upset that he would go and tear my wife's outside furniture up. <laughs> she had a lot of outside furniture, and he would just tear it up. So, you know, I got tired of that. Because, look, hey, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, she upset with me because <laughs> of you. 